welcome to the official STEM in Style YouTube channel. My name is Takita. I am a mathematician and I love to make clothing and jewelry inspired by various aspects of mathematics. I am also the founder of STEM in Style. If you don't know, STEM in Style is an organization that provides young people with all sorts of opportunities to explore science, technology, engineering and maths, through the medium and the art of fashion and design. I'm excited for you to get involved. So let's go, let's start with the first activity. For today's session, we will be using the art of weaving to create some pendants made out of crisp packets that look a little like this. Yes. Our designs will be inspired by Ada Dietz who was a mathematician, teacher and weaver who formulated handwoven patterns using algebra, more specifically using polynomial expansions. We'll be using a binomial expansion for our design today. Don't worry too much if this level of maths isn't an area you're familiar with. The pattern created follows a really simple sequence and it may even help it all make sense. For our pattern, we'll be using the binomial expression x plus y squared, which if we expand out these brackets by timesing all those terms with each other, we get x squared plus xy plus yx plus y squared. And if we simplify that even more, we get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now using Ada Ditt's hand weaving technique, we have to simplify this a little bit further and just split those terms out and we get our final sequence of xx, xy, xy, yy. Now before we start, the two variables x and y will need to be represented by at least two different coloured strips or threads that we'll be weaving. I'll be using green and silver to make use of the outer and inner colours of my crisp packet. X will be represented using silver strips and Y with green strips, all arranged in that final sequence. Let's get started, first of all, with what you'll need. So the first thing you need is a bit of a bonus because if you haven't already eaten a packet of crisps and have a spare packet lying around, you get the chance to eat a packet of crisps. So eat a packet of crisps, then wash the packet out and dry it so it's ready to go for you to make with. You'll also need some scrap card or cardboard, a scissors and, a, and or a craft knife, a ruler, a marker or a pen, some masking tape, double-sided tape, a tailor's awl, or if um, you haven't got something as fancy as that, <laughs> something that can make a hole basically, and because we're making a necklace, some jewelry findings. So a jump ring, a necklace that maybe you already have, um, and some clasps. And in terms of tools for the jewelry, uh, small pliers or long nose pliers if you have one. You'll want to get all of the components and bits and pieces for creating your jewellery piece together. The first thing you can do is cut a 4cm by 4cm square from your piece of cardboard or card. do is measure out a nine centimeter by six centimeter rectangle on the plain side of your crisp packet. Next divide your nine centimeter by six centimeter rectangle into strips that are 0 0.5 centimeters wide or five millimeters wide. You'll actually only need 16 of these strips, but the extra two do come in handy if any of them have managed to go on a walkabout. These strips will create your warp and weft. If you don't know, warp is the long ways strips and the weft will be the strips going across.
Now you've got all of your strips, you can use some masking tape to create a sort of makeshift loom that will essentially hold your strips in place as you create that sequence that we previously mentioned. Remember we're starting out with X, 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 Y, X, Y, 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 which is silver, 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 green, silver, green, green, green. So keep an eye out for that sequence as you watch me lay out my strips. strips are nicely laid out we can start to weave our weft strips I'd advise using a ruler to help keep the warp strips in place so that you can easily slide um, the weft strips into place as you can see from my example using the ruler to keep the long waist strips in place definitely helped with putting the strips that are going across in place. Remember for your weft strips, so that's the strips going across, they too will be representing the pattern of silver 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 green silver green 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 there's a lot of math that goes into the art of weaving as i'm sure you'll see it by doing this task there's all sorts of calculus and geometry and ratios and equations that go into the technical craft. But did you know weaving also played a major role in the history of computing? The Jacquard loom was a development by Joseph Marie Charles, aka Jacquard, which automated the process of weaving using a punch card system. That same system, which in fact later inspired Charles Babbage's analytical engine, hailed as the concept for the first programmable machine. Now it's time to get the backing sorted, so let's flip over our woven pattern a few strips of sticky back plastic that can cover the back of your cardboard. When I was preparing all of my components I actually forgot to cut out the backing for the piece of cardboard so you can do that now. All you have to do is place a square on a plain piece of crisp packet and you can measure and cut that out. So you want a backing that is full by four centimeters as well so that that can cover the back of your square. Now you have that, you can go back to peeling the sticky back plastic off of your square and you can place that down onto the back of your woven pattern. Now the next bit can be a little bit fiddly um, but again use the ruler to help you keep everything in place. You'll want four strips of sticky back plastic that are no more than four centimeters long and you'll be using these to put on those frayed edges around your pieces of card so that you can fold them in and stick them down. Have a look at how I get on. <laughs>
when I get to folding in the edges for that last side what I do is remove the masking tape first and then again I use the ruler to keep everything in place as I fold in that four centimeter strip on those frayed edges. Once all those edges are folded in, I do cut an extra square of sticky back plastic just to cover the exposed middle section. And then we can put on our silver backing. Et voilà, your woven algebraic pendant is ready to be made into something that you can wear. As I mentioned, I'll be using a tailor's awl to make the hole in my pendant, but if you have an alternative, feel free to use that. This can be super dangerous, so if you are one of our younger viewers, please make sure that you have an adult help you along with this part especially. Once you've made your hole, you're ready to put your jump ring through, so you can just open that up and put that through the hole and then you can close that up using your pliers. And then you can thread your necklace through. And there you have it. That's it done and ready to be worn and sported and styled as you can see me doing. <laughs> I've made this into a necklace, but this could become earrings. You can try out different colors, different sizes. We love to see everything that you make and how you get on with the activities. Be sure to hashtag make stem in style and tag us at stem in style on Instagram or on Twitter so we can see all the cool things that you have designed. If you enjoyed this activity, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and share it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you can be updated as soon as we post the next maker video in this series. Bye.